Hi guys, if you're wondering why your shoulder position is always off on the bench press, maybe one thing that you've not considered is, is the way that you're gripping the bar. Hi guys, I'm JJ from Technique Matters and today what we're going to talk about is actually your grip width as well as how you grab the bar and how it can make a significant difference to your bench press. So the first thing that we're gonna we're gonna talk about today is wide and how narrow you're gripping the bar and how that can affect your ability to press the most weight. So what we're looking for here is ideally a grip width that will stack the joints as well as help you to distribute the load between your triceps as well as your pecs and your back evenly. So all of these things will ensure that you're using the most amount of muscle to help you to bench press the most weight. So what is a good starting point for the bench press and the grip width? All your joints stacked in a nice position. So the bar is on top of your wrist and your wrist is above your elbow and that will help you to make sure that you can get the best scapular depression and retraction so once you've achieved this position what you'll be able to do is to be able to activate all the muscles in the upper body to be able to move the most weight so how does this look like in the practice of the bench press it will be if you are too close together then you are not distributing enough load onto your pecs all the weight will just be in your triceps all right if you are in a position where it's nicely stacked what that will allow you to do is also not just rely on your triceps to press the weight it will allow you to use your pecs as well as your back and to stabilize the shoulder and all of that will allow you to move the most weight and one thing that we also want to talk about is actually going to the max legal width and what that will allow you to do is actually match the penation angles of your rhomboids as well as your low traps a bit better and that will help you with your scapular retraction and depression however when you go to a max width you need to understand that your back musculature will need to be able to stabilize more in order for you you to be able to hold the weight on top of you if you are unsure about scapular retraction and depression you can check out our previous videos which we will link somewhere here when you incorporate that with what you're watching today that will allow you to get the most out of your bench press uh, mechanics and setup so take note that the wider you go on the bench press you, you will find more issues with maintaining your lat tension which will help with the depression of the shoulder blades when you're bench pressing what we suggest to you is while you are practicing your bench press you can try out different grips and over time build up to a position where you can maintain both good retraction as well as depression so you feeling your lats your rhomboids your pecs and your triceps all working together to give you the most bang for your buck if this is something that you can't yet do don't be ready to just jump on the widest grip and practice in that position you can slowly build up over time to that position and what we suggest for you to do is over time maybe between blocks you can widen out your grips by one or two fingers and slowly slowly give yourself time to acclimate to the new position so this is my part of the video now i'll pass on to clinton who will talk about some more advanced tip of how you're going to hold the barbell and how that can affect your positioning on the bench press <sighs> hey guys, it's me, Clinton, and today we're gonna talk about a little bit more advanced aspect of the bench press, specifically how do I position my wrist so that I can help in facilitating the execution of the bench press and keeping myself in the right position. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that people have assumed. Some people like to assume that your wrist should be as neutral as possible in this manner, as you can see in this illustration. Why we don't encourage this is because it doesn't help in creating a stable and locked wrist position and what happens when you bench in this manner and when the weights gets heavy you will see the wobbling of the, the wrist as you come up think about it is it safer to bench this way and when it gets heavier you start wobbling do you feel that this is safe I don't feel so okay so what I would recommend is definitely a slightly clocked back wrist but I'm not asking you to put all the load on your fingers definitely we must learn and understand that the bar should be placed still on the meatiest part of the palm okay Another assumption that people like to think about in terms of getting a good grip is trying to bend the bar to create tightness. Well, if you have assumed that benching is about bending the bar, especially for raw bench, you are definitely wrong. Because if we think about unracking and bending the bar, what happens is we lose the positioning of creating a neutral shoulder position. So what happens is you will create external rotation in the shoulders. Yes, you may feel a bit of leg engagement, but when you start pressing and tucking your elbows in, you can only feel your triceps engaging. You will start to feel your shoulders losing its position and coming off the bench as well as you can never feel any retraction at all. We would not recommend you to try to bench and set your grip 
as if you are trying to bend the bar. Because what we think is the best position for raw bench is where your shoulders are kept in a neutral position and where you should start with your elbows facing out and you should maintain that position throughout. So one rule of the thumb is once you unrack, you want to make sure that your elbows is facing the ends of the barbell. So now that we have covered the assumptions, let's talk about the proper way of gripping the bar. I would like you to follow this principle which I have applied to myself and all of my athletes and the principle is how do I position my grip so that I can keep my elbows facing out and I can feel the most amount of leg engagement as much as I can. So guys, where you apply pressure onto the bar with your hands plays a very big part on maintaining and getting into the proper position. Let me give you an example. If you put a lot more pressure against the bar with your hand towards the thumb, there's a higher tendency for you to create an external rotated shoulders and tuck elbows. So this is not what we want. We want to unrack with our elbows facing out. So what we recommend you to do is to keep the pressure against the bar on the last three fingers and the palm towards the last three fingers. When I put pressure onto my thumbs, my elbows start to go downwards. And when I twist my wrist inwards and put the weight and pressure onto the last three fingers, my elbows naturally face outwards and that will bring me to a very good position. So applying the principle of what I've mentioned, when I set up, I would first retract my shoulder blades and then I will start internally rotating my wrist until I feel the pressure all on the last three fingers and the palm. What I will do is I will raise my hips up and try to get as much leg engagement as possible. So if you are in the position where you feel that hmm, maybe my leg engagement is not that strong, play around with twisting in and out of your wrist until you feel that strong leg engagement. Once you felt that, you must hold that position of the wrist and then unrack the bar. Alright guys, so in summary, how much you set your grip is really dependent on how well you can retract your shoulder blades and how well you can depress your shoulders down. Do not go too wide if you do not have strong leg engagement and you feel that your elbows are moving everywhere when you are benching with max grip. Likewise, for the grip and wrist position, we do not want you to try to bend the bar anymore. We would like you to create a slight clock back in the wrist, maintain the weight pressure still on the palm, but keep most of the pressure on the last three fingers as illustrated throughout this video. There you go. I hope this video is useful to you. If you think it's useful, please share it to those in need and I will see you again. Goodbye.